Federal is Federal Risk Authorization, Risk and Authorization Management Program. So they want to make sure before they put any government information on a cloud facility, it is vetted and then make and then they also verify that they have the right security controls in place before they move the services on, on cloud. So now let's dive into it and see what Federal is all about. Like I said, the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program, Federal, it's a government-wide, it's a government-wide uh, program that provides a standardized approach to security assessment, authorization, and continuous monitoring for cloud products and services. So, the biggest uh, 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 cloud providers we have, uh, the Amazon Web Services, the Google Cloud, the Microsoft Azure, if they want to work with the government, they have to make, or they have to be in compliance with the federal regulations, right? So uh, federal will check that. Federal enables agencies to rapidly adapt from the old insecure legacy IT to mission enabling, secure and cost-effective cloud base. If you are in the government and then the mission that you, you provide, let's say the IRS, for example, what is the typical period, of period that the IRS is like actively busy? Right, it is from uh, December all the way to April 15th, right? That is the uh, peak uh, uh, days or the peak period that people are filing taxes and stuff like that. So in that instance, they might require a lot of computing power, right? They might require more servers, they might require more personnel, they might require a lot of computing power in order to do this, right? So are they gonna buy big, big servers just for like the five or six month period that they're busy within the year? And what happened if they, if the 15th of April passed, are they gonna just keep the servers there without you know, using it to the full capacity, right? It doesn't make sense, right? So that's why the cloud is kind of making sense to a lot of uh, government agencies and even businesses. If you have a peak period that you're busy, you go to the cloud and then you can request more computing power within that specific period. And then once you're done, you're like, okay, I'm done. My, my business is slowed down now so you can get back your servers and then I'll come back to you next year when I need more power, right? But if you bought this thing upright, you stuck with it. Even if you are low, high, medium season, whatever, you stuck with the product, right? You cannot return it back. So the cloud is offering that advantage. You buy, uh, you go in there, you, you, you lease the amount of power you need, the server capacity, the database capacity, the application, whatever. We have service uh, uh, infrastructure as a service. We have platform as a service. We have software as a service. You can lease as much as you want within that peak period. Once you're done with your peak period, you go back and tell them, hey, I don't need this much space. I don't need this much power. I don't need this much infrastructure. My peak season is done. So they roll back so you can scale down and tell them, okay, I didn't need this power. Scale <coughs> it down. And then you, you pay the little ones that you, you have, right? But if you buy it out front or you bought it out front, you cannot do that. So cloud is offering that kind of a scalability. You can scale up and down depending on how your business demands, right? So Fedram creates and manage a core set of processes to ensure effective, repeatable cloud security for the government. Fedram establishes a matured marketplace to increase visualization and familiarity with cloud services while facilitating collaboration across governments through open exchange of lesson learned, use case, and technical, uh, tactical solutions. So this is saying that if I am, let's say, uh, the CIO of uh, Department of uh, State, right? I'm in charge of the IT. And then I leverage the cloud for some solutions, right? I can share my experience with the rest of the agencies so as long as we are all within the federal space. So Department of Transportation will just contact me and say, hey, I saw that you're using this solution. Can we get some technical knowledge of how beneficial this solution is because we kind of, we kind of have this, the same problem or similar problem in our environment. We want to leverage that same product. So this guy will be able to share the experiences with the rest of the agency, right? And that is the main aim of Fedra. So now moving on, this is just the, the old way of doing stuff, right? Everything is in-house. You have your server here, you know, you have your server, you have your printer, your computer, everything is in-house. But for now, all the servers here that you see, Everything is moved to the cloud. And then you only have what? Your laptop and your, uh, you know, your, 
your te- your tablet and stuff like that. And that's all you need. And then you have your modem just to get the internet so you can drive in back and forth to get your data. But it's the old way of doing it, and this is the digital way of doing stuff right, right now, which is cost effective. All right. So Fedram. Fedram was established by now we're gonna go a little bit about the history of Fedram, right? Know when it came out and stuff like that. But what is it what uh, it was established by the OMB. OMB stands for Office of Management and Budget. And like I said previously, OMB is an executive office. They report directly to the White House, right? So OMB policy memo, December 8, 2011 to provide a standardized approach to the assessment and authorization of cloud computing service. Fedram allows joint authorization, very important. This is the reason why a lot of people are going into the Fedram space. This word, uh, this uh, uh, phrase here that says joint authorization. What do, you, what do you understand by joint authorization? Remember when we we're doing the FISMA testing, right? If we have a system in-house, we have to test it, test all our controls, do the vulnerability scanning, and then once we get to the step five of the risk management framework, someone will review the whole process and then give us authority to operate. If the system is in-house, that ATO, authority to operate, is just applicable to that agency. Nobody else, no other agency can use it, right? But in terms of federal, once you have the authorization for a, a cloud service, the next guy who wants to use the same service would not have to go through the testing and the whole process of uh, testing the controls and going to the report, uh, SAR, uh, SAR creation, the form creation, and someone else reviewing the authorization package again before they give them, uh, they give her, I mean, give the agency uh, authorization. No, as long as it's a cloud system, and I, again, maybe the CIO of state department, went through the whole process and I get my ATO to use the system, the next agency who wants to use the system will just contact me and be like, okay, I want to be able to use your system. Can I have your authorization? Right, the ATO package in FISMA, but in Fedram we can share as long as we are the same, within the same federal space. Make sense? ATO within FISMA, you cannot share it with anybody because the system is in, in your environment. But for cloud, the system sits somewhere and then you go in there and then you get your authorization to use the system. It means that anybody else within the government who wants to use that same system can leverage the same ATO package that you have. Again, it's within the same government. Why do we have to spend money again and go do another set of testing to certify the same product that has already gotten an uh, ATO? Make sense? So the joint authorization means that if, I'm, if I get my ATO, the next guy within the age, uh, within the federal who wants to use the same system will not go through the headache of testing the whole control again. All they would do is that they would request a copy of the ATO that I got, and then they can use the system as long as the system is within the cloud. You cannot share authorization if the system is in house, like we did in FISMA. You can only share authorization when the system sits in the cloud. Someone else environment, right? Like the AWS and the Amazon and uh, the, the uh, Microsoft Azure. All right. So, does so that require a different type of patent for the other systems? Patent in, in, in regards to what control, continuous control monitoring. Yeah. So, in that regards, uh, once they have uh, the joint authorization and you using it, that's a good question. So, you using it, they will have to con- continuously test your control because we're going to get into that. Before they get authority, authorization to work for the government, they have to leverage people they call the cloud service providers, right? And then they will go in there as a third party to assess the environment. But we're going to get there and then you see more. I don't want to jump in yet. All right. So, Fedram allowed joint authorization and continuous security monitoring service for cloud computing service intended for multi-agency use in order to standardize the ANA process. Key document available. So even if you are doing FISMA, what I realize is that based on the uh, experience, right? What I realize is that um, if you're an IT security person, for the most part, they will want you to do some documentation or review some document once you get on site, or they will ask you, hey, can you help us 
you know, create a template for how you do X, Y, Z, or how you do security assessment report or risk assessment report. But this web, this link here is very important. Yeah, I mean, you can bookmark this when you start working because they have a lot of template, right? So let's just open that quickly and see what they have in here. All right, so see, all of these templates are here. Initial authorization, the document you need. If you ever have the need to create an SSP, you know, you can have a template here that shows you exactly what you need to put in that SSP. You know, initial authorization phase, and then we have sample, we have, uh, POM, sample POM, we have continuous control monitoring, Federal Tailored, all of these things are like sample documentation that you can use. Let me see if I can uh, open up some of these. There was, there was something that I wanted to show you guys here yesterday. All right, so let's just look at this, right? If you want to get a copy of uh, the ATO template, how the ATO is being written, right? They have it right here. So let's say you finish your testing and everything and you want to write, uh, uh, they probably ask you, hey, we've done testing. Can you give us, can you write a template? It, uh, remember when we said the authorization package deals with what? The SSP, the SAR, the POM, and then the ATO memo. So the ATO memo is this one here. So in, in any, instance let's say you want to create uh, an ATO memo if you ever have to if you ever had the need to do that you can always come here and get this template and you could just modify it to, to your own company specification right all the documentation that you might need you know in your work you get them here in this link so let's say we want to do what is this federal annual security assessment uh, okay this is the uh, security assessment report template right Let's see how that one looks like. Maybe you just finish your testing and then your boss will be, hey, can you help us with uh, having a template, how you write security assessment report? Do not kill yourself. Always go to this link. This link will give you the template for most of the security documentation and it will tell you exactly what is needed at each step. Let's see. So you see, uh, this one is worse. Uh, annual security assessment report, SAR template. The only thing is that you just, because you're not, if you're not doing a FedRAM system and you're doing a system in-house, what you have to do is that you enable the editing and then you delete this logo, right? This FedRAM logo, you just delete it if you don't need it, right? If you're working with a FISMA system, you can modify this document for your, you know, to your own specification, right? But if your system is a FedRAM, you just leave that logo in there. But if your system is not a FedRAM, it's a FISMA system, in-house system, and they want you to create a template for security assessment report, you delete that logo, and then you put your vendor name. So let's say if it's Imotech working, you put Imotech here. The information system name, Dynamo, Maximum, whatever it is, you put it in there. So this document will tell you exactly what is needed at this step. And also this logo, if you are not using FedRAM, you delete this logo, because this logo is just for FedRAM system, right? That's how you modify this documentation and then to your own specification, right? And then at every step, annual report, you know, template revision, whatever you need, the table of content, whatever, what is needed at each step, it's gonna take you a while to do it, but at least the template has been provided for you, right? And you can work this template to report your desired uh, security assessment report. And this is not just this one. Whatever document you need, as long as it's within the security realm, you can always leverage the FedRAM. That's what I realized. FedRAM has good template. They have good documentation template. And you can work with this and create your own template. It's very important to bookmark this page, work through this page, and see what are available. And you know exactly when you start working and then they ask you to develop a security assessment plan. Go in there, get a template. Whatever is not applicable to your system, just delete it and modify it as you go along. It tells you exactly what is needed at each level. This site is great if you can leverage it. All right, so moving on. All right. 
see cloud now what do you understand by the word cloud remember when the uh in 2000 and i think 2011 12 13 ish when the words start coming out cloud you know a lot of people were like is it is it is it is, is it a computer sitting somewhere in the cloud somewhere? <laughs> you know, uh, what, what do they mean by cloud? Those, those were the bad, uh, like, like the buzz words, right? And a lot of people were confused. All right, so the simplest term, if someone who is not an IT person asks you, what is cloud? Cloud simply means using someone else's computer, right? You're using someone else's computer. You can be sitting here, and if next door to this building, if they are cloud service providers and they have big, big servers and big, big computers, and they intend to go out and let people use their services, they are the cloud. You are sitting here and your next door neighbor has big computers and then they're making people store their document, cloud service, right? It is not anything hanging up in the sky. It's just you using someone else's computer. I can have my server room here with powerful servers and I'll just advertise myself, hey, I'm a cloud service provider. If you want to store your information so you can access it remotely, I'm here, right? So you do be, for free? Like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you pay a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's why AWS is making a lot of money. Google Cloud is making money. Even uh, the one we have on our phone, what is it? The, the iCloud, iCloud and then the, the, uh, the Google Drive. Drive and again, I think it's like $2 every month. And more. 50 and you need to charge 79p, which is about 180. Because mm -hmm. I have 100 gig. Of what? You know, but, think, your information. Yeah, even on the Android, I have the hundred gig, and I think it's like uh, uh, two dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Right, so it depends. They they charge you as you go along. Those are the cloud services. Yeah, yeah. All right. So cloud meaning you're accessing your information via the internet or someone else's computer. Cloud services services refer to any computing service resources access remotely via the internet such as data storage site video site like the big the, uh, the, the popular one is the one netflix right mm -hmm. all our videos that we watch is being stored in the cloud somewhere i think they use aws and then they leverage AWS, and then you can just download the movie i mean watch the movie directly from the serverless uh, technology we also have tax preparation sites most of the tax preparation sites that we have like the uh, the turbo type, whatever they all they all utilize the uh, cloud services. Personal health record website, social networking site. For the most part, they use uh, cloud services. And then uh, web-based email application and common business application that are processed online through a browser instead of locally through an in-house or on-prem storage. So as long as your document is not on your physical machine and you are accessing it from someone else machine via the internet you're you're using cloud so for the most part everybody is using cloud even whether you know it or not for the most part you're using cloud right if you're on social media if you go on netflix to watch your movie you're utilizing the power of cloud right all right so now let's look at how the process works this is very important because now we understand why fedram and why facebook but this is how the whole process works and if you can talk about this, for the most part, I think uh, the FISMA is fading out. Very soon, everything will start moving to the federal. So cloud service provider, you're always going to hear this, like the CSP, 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 cloud service providers, such as Dropbox, Amazon Web Services, AT&T, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Service, initiate the federal assessment, process with the Federal Project Management Office, the PMO, at the General Services Administration Office after implementing Federal Security Requirement in the environment. These requirements are based on NICS 853. See that? 853 and comply with FISMA regulations. So what I'm saying here is that before a cloud service provider works with the government, say IMOTEC decided to be a cloud service provider, CSP, right? We build a big data center. We have big, big servers. We have big network devices, gadget, everything that is required for data, uh, data center, we have it. Before the government will bring the product or the information to IMOTEC, they will tell us that, okay, to qualify as a CSP for the government, you need to go register. And what do you do register? You have to register with the uh, project management office. 
at the General Services Administration, the GSA building, right? They have a project management office just for the federal. IMOTEC, after we set up our data center, we want to work with the government. What do we do first? We go register ourselves with the PMO at GSA. Once we register, that is not the end of it. They are going to tell us that, okay, we have people that we trust and vetted. We trusted them and then we vetted them that they are very good assessment organization. We want you to contact them. Let them come to your data center, do a complete assessment like we did, the FISMA testing, right? They'll come in and test all your controls, all your physical security equipment, everything, your fire extinguisher. If your data center is on fire, what are the steps? What are the backup facilities? Everything that you can imagine, all the 18 control families that we tested on the FISMA site, the, G, uh, the GSA, the Project Management Office of the GSA, they will tell you that, okay, fine, fair enough. We, we accepted your application, but we want a third party assessment organization to come in and do a complete testing, just like we, do, we did in the FISMA, right? And this testing is based on what? The 853 controls. It's the same set of controls. Now, some of this uh, uh, third party assessment organization, you're going to hear the, this word a lot. 3PAO, it's just a jargon for what? Third party assessment organization. So when you're in the, when you're in the IT environment, you're gonna hear the word 3PAO, 3PAO. They're saying that it's a third party assessment organization that has been approved and vetted by what? The office, the project management office of General Services Administration. And then you're gonna contact these three PAOs and tell them that, okay, I want to work with the government, but the government is requiring me to have you as a third party assessment organization come to my facility, get all the evidences that you need to test my system, to make sure my system is hardened enough or my system is secure enough for the government to work with me. So when, they, when these, three, uh, these uh, third party assessment organizations, the three PAOs, when they come in, they do all the reports, they're going to provide the same documentation that we saw in the FISMA, which is what? Security Assessment Report, right? The SSP, the POM, and then the ATO package. That is what they're going to submit to the government. And then the government will review it. If they okay, then the government will say, okay, we're giving the, the stamp, the authority. Now we can work with you. So we're going to tell all the rest of the agencies that if they have the need to store their document or to store their data in any Cloud service, iMotech is one of the approved cloud service providers. Make sense? So that's how AWS is now an approved service provider for the government. Microsoft Azure is an approved se uh, cloud service provider for the government. This is exactly how they went through the process. They first registered. Remember the process. You have to register with the PMO, the GSA. Once your application is accepted, they will refer you to the three PAOs that they work with, the government, they will come in and test your system. If your system is okay, they give a report. And then the next one here is JAB. Now let's talk about JAB. Let me just read the whole thing and I'll talk about JAB. It says, the cloud service provider then hires a federal approved. So this third party assessment organization, they must be approved beforehand, right? They approved third party assessment organization approved by the word federal joint authorization board, right? So the Federal Joint Authorization Board, they assess these guys. Once, once they, they approve them to be good enough to do the third party assessment, they'll give them a go ahead. And I'm gonna show you how all the list of the, the government approved. To perform an independent audit of the cloud system and provide a security assessment package to the job. Remember in FESMA, when we did what we do our, our assessment, who do we provide our package to? A, the authorizing official. Right, he reviews it. On the federal side, is the job. They ask you in the interview. So, if we are working on a system, uh, cloud system or a federal system, and then we do we do all our testing, the ATO package. Who reviews the ATO package? If you not see the authorizing official, it's a job. If it is a federal system, but if it's a FISMA system, it's the authorizing official AO, right, that reviews the package. But in the federal is a job that reviews the package. Approved and granting of ATO of the assessed system. Moving on, three PAOs are typically IT security companies, right? 
that have been assessed by the JAB to possess independent and quality management in accordance with our ISO 1720-2012 standard that have information assurance competence experience that includes PISMA, testing security controls in cloud-based information system. They have to be approved by the JAB. This is all what this is saying. You cannot just get up and say, I want to be a third party or security organization or 3PAOs. You have to. So there's a lot of checks. Before the cloud service provider work to the government, they have to go through the what the independent assessment by the 3PAOs. And before the 3PAOs become the 3PAOs for the government, they also have to be assessed to make sure they qualify. They have the right technical know-how to do an independent assessment. So you see all these checks and balance. That is what is making the federal like the preferred choice now. A lot of people are moving into the federal. So the federal PMO is responsible for managing federal, including establishing federal processes for agency compliance, maintaining TPAO program listing, keeping the repository of shared information, security package, and their ATO. This is what this is talking about. Let's go back. Let's, let me just go into this site, uh, uh, website real quick. But before then, let me just explain this. So, FedRAM goal, the goal of FedRAM is what? Accelerate the adoption of secure cloud solutions through reuse of assessment and authorization. The government is trying to make the whole process, you know, streamline the whole process. Uh, what do they mean by that? If we are all, let's say the agencies, all the federal agencies under the umbrella of the government or under the umbrella of the federal, they are, as, uh, you know, they have a system that they want to use because the Department of State is different than the uh, Department of Transportation, Department of Labor, Commerce, and all these agencies and departments, right? They want to use the same system. Are you going to tell them that each and every one of them should go through the testing of the same system that the other agencies have already established the, the ATO for? No, it doesn't make sense. As long as we are all within the federal, if one of the agency has initiated a federal process to test the system. If the system is approved to be used by the federal agency, even if I started the process, being that I'm from the labor department, all the rest of the agencies or all the rest of the department, they should be able to use the same system without the need to go back and do the same testing again, if all under the government, right? It's the same government that's gonna issue the money, pay the money, so why do it several times? One person did it, Department of Labor did it. All the rest of the agencies can use the system without going through the testing again. That's all this is saying, right? Improve confidence in the security of cloud solution and the security assessment process. With all these checks and balance, the uh, CSPs, the 3PAO being vetted by the federal office, the program management office of the GSA, it creates a sense of uh, confidence that, okay, I can work with this guy, I can transfer all my data to these guys, and I'll be secured because there's a lot of checks and balance. Ensure consistent application of existing security practice, right? So whatever practice that the Department of State is using is the same that the DOL is gonna use, the same that the Commerce Department is gonna use because it is vetted and being approved or reviewed by the same body. Increase automation and near real-time data for continuous monitoring. Once we are all in the cloud, is the same continuous monitoring process. All right. So this link here is very important. It's another link that you want to keep handy because it tells you exactly who the three PAOs are, who the approved C, uh, cloud service providers are. All of these things are very important. So let's go into this link real quick. All right, so this side, see, we have the product here, we have agencies, and we have the assessors. So the product is whatever cloud product that they are going to sell to the government, or they are going to get a business so the government can use it. The agencies, all the government agencies, Department of State, Labor, Commerce, Transportation, whatever, right, those are listed here. And then the assessment, the three PAOs, they are also listed here. All right. So now let me start with the product. I click on the product. These are all the list of the product that has been 
reviewed, tested, and approved for the government agencies to use. Because this product, they all have what? ATOs. They have ATOs or they have provisional ATO. I'll explain the, re uh, the reason that they have ATO and then they have some of the product have provisional ATOs. But for, on a high level, all these product, they are being what? Approved to be used by the government. So see, we have uh, uh, cloud.gov, we have uh, Acelion, we have uh, all of these things, right? All of these, they are all cloud services. We have the APN, we have the Amazon Web Services. You have AT&T cyber security. All of these things are, all of these product, they are product that have been approved. And then the government agencies, if you need any of these solutions, you don't have to worry about going to do the testing and going to have your ATO package. They are already been assessed and approved. All you need is just look at whoever initiated and got the ATO for it. Contact the department and tell them, hey, I want to use this product. Can I have a joint authorization? They send you a copy of the package. And you can also call them and they start using the product as long as we are all within the federal space. Make sense? So these are the product that we use. But what do I mean by provisional? So you see here, what is the metadata here? This is what service model, right? So here we have a, I mean we have IAAS. That is what infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure. What do, what do you understand by infrastructure? Infrastructure are the hardware, the storage, the network devices, everything that you're going to need. Maybe you want to start a business, but you cannot afford a server. You cannot afford a database. You cannot, all of these big, big stuff, they're all the infrastructures, right? So if you have IAAS, it stands for Infrastructure as a Service. If you have SAAS, it means Software as a Service, right? What are some of the typical software that we can we can we can use, like the Microsoft Pack application, right? Like the Word, Excel, all of these things are all software, right? So we can always use them as a service if you don't want to buy the license. You can just use them as a service and then pay monthly as we go. I think we, we I think we started using that. When you look at Microsoft Office, <laughs> now it used to be you buy the CD one time and then you use the product, but now they want you to pay monthly. Now they're moving into what software as a service. You you use the service and then they bill you monthly. You use the service to bill you monthly, right? It's called subscription based. I hate that though, but it, it used to be you buy your CD, you have everything, but now you pay monthly as you go. So, and we also have the PAAS. The PA is what? The platform. Maybe you have your infrastructure, you have your network devices, the storage, everything is there, but you just needed the platform. Platforms are like Windows operating system, right? Or you don't want the Windows operating system. You want the Linux operating system. Right? You don't want to go buy uh, Microsoft's uh, license for your stuff, or you don't want to go buy Linux, or you don't want to buy the Oracle database or SQL database. Those are platforms. Now you can go rent those as a service and you pay monthly. That's what the PAAS stands for. So what I'm driving at is, what is the difference between the ATO and the provisional ATO? So now let me click on this one here. <clears throat> This one here that says uh, A -A uh, IAS. So I click on this. Okay, we have five minutes to go. Come on. All right. So when you go down and then you look for the uh, the authorization package. All right, see that that says package ID. This is the package ID. So if anybody wants to use it, all they need is copy the uh, package ID and then see who was the one who initia initiated the process at the beginning, and then they can contact them. So you see where it says job provisional authorization date. So this service was authorized in 2013, right? So it means in August 2016. That's when the ATO expired, and then they had to do another one, right? So the provisional means that you are using the infrastructure. The infrastructure is they're providing you the network devices, the storage, the uh, the hardware that you need, but that they cannot guarantee you this. They cannot guarantee you 100% safety. Why is that? Because if I have a platform that I'm giving you to come and use, the safety will depend on the amount of uh, 
uh, infrastructure. I mean, the amount of uh, platform you bring. I'm remember, I'm giving you the platform. I'm, I'm giving you the infrastructure, the network devices, the hardware, and then you are going to bring your operating system. Put on it. You're going to bring your uh, what Windows, Linux, database. It means I cannot guarantee you 100% safety because I am not providing you the infrastructure and the platform and everything else. You are bringing your platform. So the safety depends on how secure your Windows operating system is, right? So now they can say 100% guarantee. That's why it is provisional ATO. So they say provisional ATO authorization. So they, they, the government is giving them provisional ATO. It is authorized to operate, but dependent on your security as well. If you bring your Windows operating system, your Linux operating system, your Oracle database, and you do not harden them, that is not my concern. My concern is to give you the infrastructure. The, the infrastructure. Whatever you put on that is your responsibility to make sure it's secure. My responsibility is to make sure the network is accessible to you. Nobody's going to hack you through my network. If that happens, I'm responsible. But if they hack through the operating system, that is not my issue. The operating system is not my concern, right? But then we have another one that says authority to operate, no provisional. So let's go back in there. So I'm going to go back into the products. And then here, see the one that says uh, software as a service. Let me just click on one of those. Let's see what, what this is going to say. So you see, agency without a provisional, it says authorization date. Because you are using that software, and the software is the last stage. There's nothing else, right? So it means they are providing you the software. The software sits on their infrastructure. It sits on their platform, and then the software. So all the security is completed down to the bottom because you are, you are renting everything from them, right? Because the software cannot be a software without a platform or without the infrastructure. That is the assumption. So once that as, 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 um, is a, that once that as, uh, assumption is in place, it means that that is what full authorization. They are telling you that it's fully authorized to operate. You have no expectation of anything else to do because they have what they have implemented all the levels of security all the way to the software. But if you're not going for the software and you're going for you say, oh, I have my own software. I just want you to give me the platform. Then they will tell you it's provisional. Whatever you put on the on top of the infrastructure, it's your responsibility to make sure it's secure. But if you don't want to go that, you can say, okay, give me everything, infrastructure, platform, and the software, right? And then I know the security depends on you, right? So it depends on how and what you need. But if you have this knowledge, you understand exactly how this whole thing works. Do I want infrastructure? Do I want platform? Do I want software? Whatever you want depends on how you secure your environment is. So you have to pay them for each of these servers mm -hmm. to guarantee the security. Yeah, if you wanna, yep, leave you, yeah. Because all of these things, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, they have their own price as you go along. Yeah. So the only one that has an ATO, not a PTO, is What's that? Software as a service, is that the only one that has the ATO? Uh, software, I think platform as a service does the ATO too because they assume that at that point, your uh, they they can provide you some. Let's 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 look at that real quick. I think platform as a service also has uh, the ATO instead of the PTO. So we just have P ATO, sorry. Mm -hmm. So we just do the, that particular cost of the ATO. Yeah. So it's dependent so, upon the product and not just the where you get the platform. Yeah, it depends on what you are uh, taking. Are you taking the infrastructure, or you taking the platform, or you taking the software? But for the most part, infrastructure, because they assume that the infrastructure you are coming in for will not be operational. You just have to put something on top of it. So that's why they're saying we're giving the PATO. Because whatever you put on that, that security depends on you. Yeah. So let's look at the PAS, PAS, and C. Yeah, so that one too is uh, uh, authorization. So there's no PATO. So I think the only PATO is the infrastructure because they are not giving you anything. They're just giving you the network and the hardware. If you, if I'm giving you the hardware, the hardware is nothing but hardware. You cannot do anything with the hardware. You have to put in the software. So they're saying 
we are not going to guarantee the safety of your software. That is on you. But the hardware we are giving you is secure. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So now let's go back into uh, when, okay, in this product, see the agency using this service. If you want to see who are the agencies currently using this service, this service that we're looking at right now, you go down here, you see Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearm and Explosive, uh, Commodity Features Trading Commission, and we have what, Department of Commerce, we have uh, Department of Health. All of these agencies are currently using this service, right? That's what they, that this means. So you can, if you click on the product, you see exactly how many people are using it. Uh, I think I clicked on, uh, uh, what is it? Okay, this is the file. What is the name? Yeah, this one here. I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a cloud service. <laughs> All right. So now let's look at the agency tab, right? So the agencies. Now all of these agencies are already in the cloud. So now it's not. I remember back in the day, it's like few handful of the agencies. They don't trust the cloud that much. But now, see all these guys, they're all into the cloud now. DOD, Department of Health and Human Services, Federal uh, Communication Commission, all of these agencies are in the cloud. So cloud is gaining the grounds now. A lot of people have confidence in the cl uh, cloud service now. So everybody's going to the cloud. So you see all these agencies, they are in the cloud. What is this photo? Mm. Is that... Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many product they are using that is in the cloud? See this one here is asking about this one that says product used. So executive office of the president, they have five product being used. This that is a uh, cloud product, right? And then when you go to office of management and budget, they have three product used, and these three products are cloud products. And then uh, let's see, this one has twenty eight. Department, Department of Interior, they have what twenty eight. I think those, those, that's the uh, the most, right? Oh no, we have 30, 34. Yeah, Department of Defense, 48. Agriculture has 38. Department yeah. of Defense has what? Defense is a lot. Yeah, Defense so, got 48. Uh, 48. Health and Human Services got 57. Okay, all right. So now you see, it makes sense. Now a lot of uh, the government agencies, if Department of Defense is using 48, you know it's secure, right? So, <laughs> so cloud is secure, or else those guys are not going to be using it. Human service is what, 57? Yeah. yeah. Commerce is 43, right? So this is how you kind of play around with this. And then also let's look at the assessors. These guys are the ones that have been pre-approved to be the third party assessment organization, the three PAOs. So if you get a call and interview for any of these guys, it means you're gonna be assessing the product that is gonna be in what? In cloud for the most part, because they, they are a cloud service provider assessment approved. So if you get a call from Blue Canopy, for the most part, you probably on oh no, Blue Canopy, they, they have zero so far. They didn't assess any of the system. So this one, this one will tell you how many systems they have assessed within the cloud service. I think the most is what, uh, Coal Fire, this one here, 91. They've assessed a lot of system for the government already. So for the most part, if you ever get a call for Coal Fire for security assessment assessor or IT security analyst, you're probably going to be working in some form of uh, cloud service because they these guys are approved to assess any system in the cloud for the government right deloitte is there has one system so far being uh, they, that they've assessed and then uh we have uh Grand so all of these guys so if you really want to get in a uh, uh like an assess assessment or assessor job for the government that you assess system for the government, just look at this site and go to their website and see if they have any openings, just apply directly to them. See these guys here, just click on the Deloitte, apply directly to them, it co fire directly if you want to do assessment for the federal. That is kind of a short project, like the most is like six months. You finish, you go to the next one, you just be moving around. And you're going to learn a lot with that if you really want to pre uh, Preposition yourself to learn a lot. You can work with these guys and it's short contract. Three, three, four, five, six months, you're done with the system. You go to the next system, you go to the next system. That's how you learn this product a lot. So you can go to directly to this site and then apply for any security assessment position that you have. But make sure you know how to do the testing. Those test cases, the, uh, the spreadsheet, know how to do the control, copy the control, turn the control into a question, 
ask the question, know how to add the right evidence, test your system, you can apply directly for this guy. It's the same testing procedure, but you're not going to be testing it for in-house system. You're just going to be testing it for a cloud-based system. Yeah, you can they do the operational management and the technical controls. So they need people who are who can test operational controls, right? They need people who can take man management. But if you have technical ability, it means you can do the three. But for the most part, they will hire people who can do operational. And because uh, the technical guys, what I realize is that they hate to do this operational. Like if you put someone who's like highly technical to go and start looking at fire extinguisher doors, keys, you're wasting his time. But a lot of people will want to start with that as they learn the technical how to test technical controls. So they need people to test all the three classes. Yeah. All right, so now moving on. All right, so these are some of the examples that we just saw. These are, the, I just listed them here. All right, so now what is the job? The job is, remember we talk about job as against the authorizing official. In the FISMA, it's just one person. They call him the AO, authorizing official. He reviews the package. But in the bedroom, look at that. It says the three permanent members of the job include this. So they have permanent members of the job. These guys are always permanent. They review the package for any cloud service. They review the authorization package. The C, number one, the CIO of the Department of Homeland Security is a permanent member of the job. They review the package. The CIO of the Department of Defense is another permanent member. The CIO of the General Services Administration, the three permanent members of job. Right, and then the fourth one, you see, I put some that in there because it changes. If I am the CIO of, let's say, Department of Transportation, and I just saw a product that has no authorization yet, it's a brand new cloud product that I want, right? It means I cannot go and borrow any authorization from anybody. It's a brand new product. Nobody has ever had any authorization on that system or tested the system. And me, I need that system for my transportation department. What I would do is that I would call this guy and say, hey, I need this system, but nobody has authorization for it yet, mm -hmm. right? And then they're gonna say, okay, now we're gonna contact the three PAOs and go test the system to make sure the system is secure for the government to use. If the three PAOs finish testing, because I requested the system, I'm gonna be the, the temporary member, the CIO of the Department of Transportation, right? Because I requested the system that has no authorization yet. And then they're going to give, the GSA is going to give uh, the three PAOs guys to go test the system. Once they bring the package, to review the package, I'll be sitting in there too, to review the package. Once, they, once we review the package and then we approve the OTO, now I can, as a Department of Transportation guy, I can go start using my product. Guess what? I drop off. I'm not a permanent member. So the, the fourth members, the fourth, fourth member is always the member that is requesting a cloud service that has not already been out and tested, right, makes sense? And then you become the, temp uh, the temporary member. Once they review the package, and then you get your ATU to go start using the product, you drop off, right? So the representative of the sponsor sponsoring government agency for each cloud computing system application would be represented at the, as the word rotating job member. That's what that means. That's why I didn't put anybody here. It could be anybody, whoever is requesting the service that has not, the key, that has not been authorized or assessed before. Mm -hmm. Because if that service has been authorized or assessed and authorized before, you don't need that. You just need to go get the package and you can use it. But if it's a brand new system, nobody has assessed it before, no authorization for it, the CIO of that agency will be the temporary member. And then once they review, test everything, they review it, it gets it ATO, it drop off. Make sense? Yes. All right, so now the information system, and I, I just want to finish in about 10 minutes, I mean, five minutes, I mean, I mean, the information system security and identity management committee, which is an interagency forum for identified and recommended strategy, strategic high priority IT security and identity management initiative, the federal CIO council and OMP. So these guys, they just an advisory body, you know, it's responsible for socializing and reviewing federal process and documents and providing recommendations to federal documentation directly to the job. These guys are what? Information Security and Identity Management Committee. They advise the job, right? They just give them advice. That's all this is saying. Just give them advice based on the cloud computing best practice. But these guys are like the, call it the R&D, the research and development. They do a lot of research and development in the 
cloud environment. So based on the cloud computing best practice, lesson learned, emerging concepts with the Federal CIO Council community, community, they do research on the cloud service and then they advise the job because the job are the ones reviewing the authorization package. So these guys are the R&D, they research the cloud and they give them advice. So they know exactly what to look for when they review the documentation to get the ATO. This, this is what they do. All right, so this is just the definition. If you want to memorize the jargons, right? Joint authorization board, the primary government decision making for the federal. Office of Management and Budget, CIO Council, Federal uh, PMO Office, DHS, National Institute of Technology. These are all jargons. You can read through them. But the point is, I just want you to understand how the process works. What is the CS, uh, CSPs, the cloud service providers? What is the CPAOs, third party assessment organization, right? How are they? I, am I just going to start building my data center and just start working with the government? No, I have to register with the PMO, the GSA office. Now they're going to connect me with the 3PAOs that they have already approved, pre-approved. And then they come in, test my environment, provide the documentation to the job. The job people review it and say, okay, Emotech is good. We go work with Emotech. That's how the product. If you can say this in the, in the interview, they know that you understand the federal process, right? So you can boldly say, hey, I know how federal works. All right, so these are the, the, uh, just the pictorial representation of everything. The government, the president office is here, and then we have what, uh, the GSA, uh, we have, but these are what, the, the permanent members of the, the job. The NIST, they're also part of the federal because they provide all the standards, 853 controls that we are using for the federal is being produced by this. CIO Council, they provide advice to the job. This is how the whole thing looks like. This is federal in a nutshell, and this is the future. A lot of people are going into the federal. All right, any questions? Yes. Yeah. Right, so good. So what, what that means is that when they review, when they, uh, let's say your three, your continuous control monitor, that's why I said, let's hold it. All right, so maybe you can take five and then Jamil, let me just drop this. Stop this. Um, 